I'm, I'm just, I was not expecting it to be this short. I went and I told my lady, I was like, yeah, I want to go short, like, shaped like a bob, not like a lob, but like longer than a bob. Like, I wanted it to have some clearance off my shoulder, but I didn't want it to have like that much clearance off my shoulder. I wanted it to be like there. I'm trying to remember the shortest hair I've seen you have. I don't. I think this is the shortest. This is probably it. Yeah, this is a contender. Like, this is, I think, the shortest my hair has been in a very, very long time. And Mm -hmm. I'm having a difficult time adjusting. Well, what, why, why do you not, is it just because you think it's too short, that's that's all it is? Yeah, like, I think the haircut looks great. I think it, I just think it's too short. It's just shorter than I wanted it. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks fine. Um, look, hair always grows back, you know, well, probably, I can't say for certain, you know, you never know, but. I think it'll be fine, but I mean, it looks really healthy, and like, they styled it nicely, although, I used to have, like, the little kind of, like, curtain bang things in the front, like face framing pieces that were shorter, so it was kind of like that. And I feel like, so those pieces from my last haircut had grown out to, like, just a little bit longer than these front pieces here. And then they, like, trimmed those down and cut the bob to that. And I don't know. I think there's just too much hair right here in the front of my face for me. So I need to figure out what I how I feel about that. Because I don't, I was like, I'm not going, I'm not getting bangs. Because that would have been, like, a nightmare scenario. I also got bangs with this. But, yeah, I think I just need to figure out how to style it. Because right now, this straight down thing. I think you can get away with this. But I, I assume you'll put your, you know, your spin on it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I you'll, like you'll feel more, more confident off my face than I do with it, like, in the front of my face. But, yeah, I think we're having the, like, post-haircut, you know, like, they always, like, take the pictures or whatnot once you get your haircut with it, like, down in the front and everything. And I just always like my hair more when it's, like, tucked behind my ear. And I think that's – I don't like it on my face. And this haircut, I think, is very conducive to it being all over my face. So, we'll we'll see. We're going to work with it. But – it's really short. They had to, like, shave my neck, and now the back of my neck is, like, red and irritated. Really? What happened? Because, like, it's so short in the back that, like, I guess they, like, shortened, like, the little those hairs. And they, like, shaved the ones underneath them. I don't know. Weird. So... That's my my big thing that I did recently, which was cut all my hair off. This is the experience podcast with me and someone else. It's Elizabeth with Elizabeth, no yeah. basically yeah, she, yeah, she's she has no hair left. Um she has some explaining to do. Um but before I we get into that, I do have to I, this is a uh, a disclaimer, I guess. I, I don't I don't think I'm sick. I think it's allergies, but it's it's been rough the last like day and a half. Mm-hmm. Um I like it's just con- congestion and then like a dry throat. What's that? The pollen is pretty bad up here. Like last. Oh, well, I, 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 my car is covered in it. Like mm-hmm. there's a full coat. It's, 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 it's not, my car color is different. Um, so I, and I was sick like two weeks ago. That's why I'm like, I, I, it's probably not sick again. Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess it could be something different, but I, I'm assuming it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a different type of congestion than it was, than like, when I was sick a couple of weeks ago, too. So, like, it's different enough. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you're, I, what I'm getting at is you're going to have to carry the load here. Um, I'm prepared. Just, yeah, talk. 
irritates my throat to an extent. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll start out because you were we had a high profile episode a couple weeks ago. In case mm-hmm. you weren't aware. The one that I was supposed to be on. Yeah, there were a lot of people there, and they were at, they were asking about you because I was teasing the whole time. I was like, "Don't worry, we got someone else coming." <laughs> oh Everyone's no! Everyone's like, "Oh man, who is it? This is a big guest coming on." And then, uh, then you never showed up. So I was um, at the grocery yeah. store. Yeah, it was a mess. I was looking for certain ingredients, and they didn't have it, so I had to go to a different grocery store. Anyway, I didn't get home until too late from the grocery store. That one was on. It was my poor planning on the timing. Well, it's okay. We had too many people on that episode anyway, so. Well, a bummer for me to have missed. I guess I could have Skyped in from the grocery store. That's true. You could have. You could have made a better effort. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is my penance that I have to talk the whole time this time. Um, So, so, yeah, go ahead. To uh, Carabas in the airport. Have I been to a Carabas? Like, are you talking about a specific one or in general? Well, I went to the Carabas in the Atlanta airport this past Friday night. I was in, I was traveling for work training all week. And then Friday afternoon, we ended at like lunch. Then I went to the airport and then had to connect through Atlanta to fly back home. And there were like five of us all taking the same flights back. And we just had dinner in the Atlanta airport Carabas. And it was, like, actually such a trip. Um, It was, like, the lady came and took our order and then just, like, disappeared for, like, a while. And then just came back and started, like, bringing, like, random elements of our meal. So, like, all of us who got salads got our salad. And then one person got their soup, but one person didn't get their soup. And then the, like, bread dippers appetizer that one person ordered came after all of our entrees came. It was it was a really interesting time. Also I got their like blackberry sangria. I think it was like a blackberry flavor, maybe like blackberry and lemon. And like the first sip I had, it like literally tasted like cough medicine and I was like, oh no, this is like not it. But then I had a sip where it was, like, not – because you know how, like, when, like, a drink is poured and, like, the ice is only in, like, the top half of the glass and, like, the bottom of the cup, the drink is warm and, like, the top half of the cup, the drink is, like, nicely chilled ice temperature? So that happened with this drink. And, like, the warm – if it was warm, it tasted like cough medicine. But then if it was cold, it tasted, like, refreshing. But I was like, this is a dangerous game to be playing here. So. I think I've had a similar experience at Carabas. It was probably, like, a decade ago. Mm -hmm. But this sounds familiar. I wasn't the one in the Atlanta airport. I think it was a standalone restaurant. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to one since I was, like, I don't even know how long ago it was. I was either in 8th grade or in 12th grade. And it was, like, on a band trip down to Universal. Like, no in between. It was one of the two. Eighth grade, Okay. Um, anything else you got going? So you just did a work trip? Mm-hmm. I had a week-long hands-on training. It was a ton of fun. 
was really exhausting. Um, and then every evening people would do stuff because we were all trying to hang out with all of our like cohort because we're all separate at four different sites. So we don't all get to see each other really. And so like Sunday night, there was a group of us that went out and had um, Indian food for dinner. And then Monday night, I'm trying to think what I did Monday. Oh, Monday night, I went out to a place in downtown for dinner because one of my friends who was not in my cohort, but was in a different program, like the same year as my cohort, so like the broader cohort, um, she was moving. She was leaving the next weekend, moving out of Greenville. And so we had dinner for her, and that was super fun. And then Tuesday night, they did a happy hour for us after work, and they brought in a beer truck, which is, like, this, like, vintage blue pickup truck that has taps on it. And they had a couple of different beer options, and they also had, like, two wine cocktail drinks. Like, one was a sangria and one was a margarita. Um, the margarita one was actually really good. And then a food truck called MacTac, which does like fancy mac and cheese, for lack of a better term. It was like Carolina pulled pork, or you get like Nashville hot chicken mac and cheese. Um, they also had some non mac and cheese options. Which also looked good. That was like, you know, noodles and red sauce tossed with vegetables. So a pretty good menu options they had there. Where and then this? in Greenville. Greenville. So that was like at work and they like brought it onto site. And we just had it like right in like a green space by one of the buildings. And then, but after that, that happy hour ended. And then there was a group of the cohort younger than us that wanted to hang out with everybody. Cause they were like, Oh, we haven't met most of this class cause they've been out and about in various places. So we want to meet you guys. And so then we went to another brewery. Right after that, I hung out until pretty late. And then Wednesday night, I was like, I'm not going to be social. I'm just going to rest. And then I didn't. I went to trivia at a meadery. And I actually, okay, I will say I went to this place called White Duck Taco, which was right next to the meadery to get some tacos. And those tacos were so good. They were delicious. Honestly, I was expecting, so I got a chicken tikka masala taco, and I was expecting that one to be the best one, and it was my least favorite of the three, even though it was still delicious. And then I also got just, like, a fish taco, and then one that was called Bangkok shrimp, and the Bangkok shrimp was the best taco of the three. So good. Really interesting flavor profile. And then the trivia at the meadery, we came in second to last, but... What was exciting about it is that apparently second to last is like the more coveted position if you're not going to win because you get a free drink chip for coming in second to last. So that was kind of fun. So it really sounds like you had a lot of fun on your work training week. It was a really fun work training. I mean, the training itself was fun, too. It was hands on. We were. Doing like machining, joining, inspection processes, working with hardware. Um, we did like a design thinking seminar over a couple of different sessions. A lot of fun. I learned a lot. Great experience. And then Thursday night, I went bouldering because I had planned to do that already. And The bouldering was fun. Um, Mostly because I was catching up with some of my old work friends from a previous team that I had rotated on. 
And then after that, I went back into downtown and they were having this event called Downtown Alive where they had like no open container laws for like two blocks. And then they have like a beer and wine truck, food trucks, and then live music. And it's just nice outside. It's light, warm, summery and live music. So all around training, but also super fun week of activities on top of it. So then I was super tired when I got home this weekend, but it was also the Albany Tulip Festival because there's a lot of like they're up here. It's like Dutch heritage. So they have like a partnership. I think they have like a sister city somewhere. And then they have tons of tulips that they plant every year. And so they, like, showcase the tulips and have, like, a little festival. And I bought some art. So. Okay. Um, So there you have it. Yeah. A fun week for you. Yeah. Well, now this week I'm trying to play catch up on all the, like, work I missed while I was doing work. Look, we're, we're bearing the lead here. It's been, it's been about a month, admittedly, but this is the first time you've been on since it happened. Um, we have a new album. And I always get the name wrong. The Tortured Poets Department. Oh, it's not, okay. It's I not, wasn't sure. I was like, am I going to talk about it? I don't know. No, we have to. The, I, the name is not catchy, okay? Taylor, next album, let's make it a little easier, okay? Mm-hmm. Just oh, okay. you can forward that. So. The name was not, not... Yeah. Doesn't roll off the tongue. No. Okay, so... Are you ready to open this can of worms, Daniel? Sure, we can do it. I mean, I know pe- some people, look, I, I, there are people who are a little um, swifted out. Um, but, you know, she, she's a big deal to a lot of people. And um, you're the only one I talk to about it. So, so. People are like swifted you. out? Who's swifted out? I won't name names, but... Uh, there are some people that, that get a little swifted out. So, um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, this, this is the only opportunity that the podcast really gets to touch on it. You know, and this, this is what really drives clicks. Let me tell you. Well, it really brings in the people. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll talk about it. Okay. So, some of the backstory of the album, you know, we get the announcement. Taylor was like, Hinting at, like, for example, when she was at the Grammys and she was like, I've been keeping a secret for, like, too long or whatever and said, like, two with her hand, like a peace sign, two. And then she announced, so, like, at the Grammys when she won, she announced this album for April 19th. And so something that some people noticed about the April 19th date as they were speculating that it had something to do with, like, a post from Joe Alwyn or, like, the first post that somebody, I think it was Joe Alwyn's, like, co-star in some film he was in made. And, like, he was tagged, and it was from April 19th. And so there was some speculation there that mainly he... Like, maybe there was some, like, infidelity there. They were, like, struggling with that. I don't know. Nothing is confirmed. And we're also, like, not trying to super hate on Joe. So, basically, people were expecting, oh, like, this is the Joe Alwyn breakup album. Like, here we go. Jake Gyllenhaal, move over. We're here to hate on Joe. Um, And so the album comes out on the 19th at midnight. And I actually did not stay up to midnight for this one. I went to bed at a normal hour and then, like, woke up Friday morning. But when I wake up Friday morning, I'm just doing my thing and, like, clicking on it and, like, 
opening Spotify, opening Instagram, just to see, like, whatever the post was, blah, blah, blah. And then Taylor's like, ha-ha, surprise, at 2 a.m., it's a double album. And she dropped, like, 15 more songs. So, yeah, let me, let me look. Is she really, she goes, I mean, a lot of, a lot of albums, you know, five to ten songs. Taylor's like, no. Mm-hmm. How many can I put on? How many can I put on this album? Yeah, I think I don't know. when she was younger, she used to, like, not put out as many songs on an album. Like, there were, like, a lot of cuts. And now that she's, you know, kind of just her own phenomenon, she just does what she wants. And to an extent, but her earlier albums, like, Fearless has, like, 12, or 15, 12 to 15 songs, I think, on it. You know, like, yeah, but Fearless Taylor's version is pretty long. Okay, yeah, Fearless Taylor's, Fearless Taylor's version is, like, 50 songs. But I'm just saying, even the earlier albums are still long That's or true. above average, I'll say. They put out a lot of music. They're not short albums, you know. Yeah, I think which is fine, but quantifies an album it's like being over 30 minutes or something maybe and yeah she's well reaching that mark okay so she makes the original post about the tortured poets department um and like she says this whole thing blah 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 she was like there's no scores to settle a lot of wounds are self-inflicted like, she's like, once we've spoken our saddest story, we can be free of it. And then she said, that's all that's left behind is tortured poetry. Tortured poets department is out now. And then at 2 a.m., she said, it's a 2 a.m. surprise. The tortured poets department is a secret double album. I'd written so much tortured poetry in the past two years, wanted to share it with all of you. So here's a second installment of the tortured poets department. So it's the tortured poets department, the anthology. 15 extra songs. So, we get the original one, and some of the highlights of the main one, which we already knew, which was the opening song was Fortnite with Post Malone. That's the leading single. She made a music video for it. She came out with the music video, I want to say, it like came out Friday night at 8. So, Friday the 19th. Um... And, you know, there are some songs on here, like, So Long London, you're like, oh, totally, like, that's definitely about Joe Alwyn, um, as he is from London. Florence and the Machine is fe- featured. And then the last song, I believe, on the regular, yeah, the last song on the regular part of the album is Clara Bow. And then you have the extra 15 songs. So within the extra 15, so the addition in the anthology, there are four songs that we already knew about. And those were the kind of bonus track file songs that Taylor was including on the four variants of the vinyl she had released or the CD. However you, you know, get your physical music copies. And so those four songs are The Black Dog, The Albatross, the Volter, and the Manuscript. And the Manuscript is, like, the main one. It's the one that comes on, like, the Target exclusive version. It's the one that's on the main version on her website. But the Bolter, the Albatross, and the Black Dog were the other three variants, and she kind of marketed them like case files, almost. And then, at one point, she did, because she's a capitalism queen, she did, like, literal, like, patches and case file things that you could get from them. Now, I was not about to purchase all four of these albums, not, you know, just because I didn't know what these songs were, but I still wanted to do it on pre-order. So I actually did pre-order one of the albums um, just based on the cover art. So she did the drops where she released first the one with the manuscript. I believe it's a white vinyl. And then the one that I got is the one that has the bolter on it. And I just liked that album cover the best. The albatross. And that one's kind of tan. 
beige, maybe. The albatross is gray, and the black dog is a black vinyl. So, like, a very, you know, that's a normal-looking vinyl. And then I think the Target exclusive was clear. I already have a clear vinyl from a different artist, so I was like, hmm. But all that to say, once listening to all of this, I think that the Bolter was, a, first of all, a good choice because I like that song. I think that I liked the Black Dog the best out of those four songs, um, but I still liked the Bolter album art better. So I'm sounding my decision for anyone who was worried about that thought process because I went through, like, multiple weeks of debating over this because as she would release them, she'd be like, oh, this one's available for 72 hours. Buy it now. And then, you know, you never know if she's going to put it back on her website or not, because she completely wiped her entire website. I was literally shopping on it the day before she, like, wiped everything. And I almost bought the Lover vinyl, and I was going to buy this, like, Reputation scrapbook that she had on the Reputation store for something else that I was working on. Anyway, I could not purchase those because she wiped the whole store and there was nothing in there. And then she just loaded in only tortured quotes department related merch. Now that she's back on tour, she has re-uploaded the full Eras Tour store. And she's also updated all of the merch. And so the Eras Tour t-shirt actually includes the tortured poets department now. So the original, it was like a, a I think it's a three by three grid. Maybe it's four by three. Let me look up the merch. Anyway, the original was a grid and the middle, the middle of the grid, the bottom three tiles were all midnight, it's like a big kind of photo of her from the Midnight's era. But now Midnight's has moved and there's a tortured poets department in there, too. So, going back to the album, as I'm pulling up this Eras Tour shop. Let me just say, that is complicated. And I'll admit, I didn't follow all of that. <laughs> um, totally fine. Oh, it was a 3 by 4 grid. Um but now the merch has been updated from the Paris shows this past weekend because she added the Tortured Poets Department to the set list. And to do that, she also rearranged a bunch of the rest of the show. So she used to start out, so she starts out in the Lover era. And did I, did I have I gone through the way the show works on the podcast before? I feel like you did last time. I feel like I have. But yeah, she starts in the Lover era and then she goes into Fearless. And then she would go into Evermore. And so opening night of Paris, which, you know, first stop on the European leg of the tour, first stop on this, you know, part of the tour. Recently, she's been not touring since she was in Asia and taking time off and enjoying, you know, the album release. (laughs) She ends red, it comes out. Or no, she ends Fearless and then comes out for Red. And people were like, what? So basically, she combined Folklore and Evermore together to add in Tortured Poets. And then there were some song cuts from various parts of the show. But mainly, she cut The Archer and Lover. And then she cut some songs between Folklore and Evermore. following i i follow i I think i'm following yeah okay so the hard-hitting thing that happened when this album came out and everybody starts listening to it everyone's like oh my gosh this isn't even all about joe it's about also maddie healy so backtrack back to when the news breaks that taylor and joe have split I want to say last February, like February of last year. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, 
Love is Dead. And not, I don't know if it was too long after that. Some Sometime in that, like, period of time, after the breakup is announced, that it, it had been official for a little while, then Maddie Healy of the 1975 starts to, like, crop up around Taylor. And, like, this is not the first time we've seen an interaction between Taylor and the 1975. There's, like, a paparazzi photo from back in her, like, probably, like, red 1989 era of life where she was walking around in a 1975 T-shirt. They've definitely been friends for, like, a really long time. I think he's worn Taylor Swift merch before. Um, And then he actually opened... So at that point in time, Phoebe Bridgers was opening as one of the openers for Taylor Swift on the Airs tour, and he's friends with her. And so he actually played in her band and opened one or two shows on the Airs tour. And then there were photos of, like, the two of them seen out at dinner and such. And so basically, I mean, I don't think Taylor has – commented on anything officially but everyone's like ah so the speculation is that people think that they had like a maybe something will happen maybe something won't happen kind of friendship on and off again all throughout her like dating history where like if she was single it was like a will they won't they kind of deal and You know, maybe the timing was never right for them. So now that she's, like, free, she, like, runs straight to him and has, like, her, like, little, like, I just got out of a six-year relationship manic episode and, like, I want to be with you. And then it just was not good. And so I think my speculation is that, like, the official length of their relationship was only, like, a fortnight, so 14 days. And that's where... Fortnite's coming from and it's like the lyrics in Fortnite. the big one is I love you it's ruining my life and like there was a lot of backlash people were like why is she dating him like he is so gross and there was a lot of negativity um I don't know all of the Maddie Healy drama but people were not liking him so in my opinion I think that Fortnite, probably that's her telling us the length of that relationship. And yeah, but really good. Post Malone is doing like almost kind of like backing vocals in it. I don't think there's any point where he's like singing really by himself unless it's like a call and response kind of thing. So that's Fortnite. Music video is pretty good. And then Tortured Poets Department, the next song on the album, opens with You left your typewriter at my apartment straight from the Tortured Poets Department. And then also in the chorus, um, she says, I laughed in your face and said, You're not Dylan Thomas, I'm not Patty Smith, this ain't the Chelsea Hotel, we're modern idiots. So I think that actually the Tortured Poets Department is almost like mockery. Like she's saying like we're not these tortured poets from like back in the day that people like dream of. Like you have your typewriter and you're such a tortured poet and just being very sarcastic. And this is her like coping and just kind of poking at it like Ah, your life is so hard. No, it's not. So she's got this whole aesthetic. Also, something people noticed and pointed out in the music video and in all of the typewriter typed documents that she shared that she was using as. um, What's it called? Like promotional material. She was using an I in the place of a one in all of that. 
because and then in the music video the typewriter didn't have a number one. And so the omission of the one is like referring back to her song The One on folklore. And that song's all about how the words are like, it would have been fun if you would have been the one. And so it's like whoever that person is, is is gone now. Okay. So then you go into My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I have anything super in-depth to say about this one. Mm, yeah. No, but this, it's not just a very depressing album. Like, it's very sad. And then Down Bad, that's one of the ones that kind of took off. Um, and the chorus is like, now I'm down bad crying at the gym. And then she says, um, she drops the F-bomb a lot in Down Bad. She also says teenage petulance, and I, I like that one. So Long London's kind of gut wrenching, but Daddy I Love Him is really good. Um, I kind of like the story that it tells in there. It's initially, it's saying like, almost like a begging, like, but Daddy I Love Him kind of pleading with, you know, the parent in the case, and everyone's like, Stay away from him. He's not good for you. And then it's like, but daddy, I love him. And then she's like, I'll tell you. Oh, also. Mm, no, she one of the lyrics is I'll tell you something about my good name. It's mine alone to disgrace. And so, you know, that's her kind of rebel. I can do what I want. If people like want to think this, they can. And then eventually. She's like, well, my parents came around, but everyone else is holding out. But she's like dancing in her dress and her dad loves him. I will say my one thing with this song. So the actual, the full chorus is screaming, but daddy, I love him. I'm having his baby. No, I'm not, but you should see your faces. Um, and I feel like that's like explaining like the level of like pleading where she's like, just accept him. Like you're stuck with him. Um, and that, that's, I think the kind of the device that she's trying to get across this like hyperbole of like bargaining to be with this person. Um, and this one, I think we, I think this one was like more about Maddie Healy. Fresh Out the Slammer, also about Maddie Healy. It's like, you get out of jail, who's your first call to? Maddie Healy, cause she's single and she wants to be with him. She never got to be with him. Uh, Florida with Florence and the Machine is good. It's kind of just like, chill vibes. And then, It's like, go down to Destin, and then everything goes, like, all big, and it's like, Florida! But that one got turned into a TikTok audio because of the lyric, you wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me. So that was, that one was big on TikTok. I think I already said that Down Bad, I think, was also big on TikTok. Making sure that actually is the line a line in this song. Actually that might not be in Florida. It might be in Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. One second. Do 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 No, that is, okay, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me. That's in Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, so I'm skipping ahead of myself. Um, Guilty as Sin, good song. Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. This one was a a, for a big standout for me at first. I I liked the way she did the chorus where 
she's like, I'm screaming, like, who's afraid of me? And then she goes and drops. She's like up in the upper part of her register when she sings that. And then she drops to a really low part and is like, you should be. Um, so I thought that was good. Skipping ahead, I can do it with a broken heart. That one is like the super boppy, like, haha, I'm so depressed. I act like it's my birthday. And like, this music's really upbeat, but like, the words are really like down because that juxtaposition of like how she was performing the Eras tour despite being super broken hearted over Joe. And all the crowds were like, we love you. We're the, like, everyone's screaming for her and it's so excited that, you know, they have no idea that this is going on and she's trying to power through it. And then the smallest man who ever lived, that one is like literally such a great diss track. Like she was saying how I got I to gotta pull up the words. It, it opens up with, was any of it, any of it true? Gazing at me, starry eyed and your Jehovah's witness suit. Like, <laughs> That's obviously about Maddie Healy because he wears that when he performs with the 1975. But then this whole thing is basically she's saying like a message to the smallest man who ever lived. And it was like, I don't even want you back. I just want to know like what your goals were. And then the alchemy is pretty sweet, and that one kind of sounds like people drew lines between the alchemy and So High School, which is So High School was on the extended version, the anthology, and those both you could, if you wanted to draw lines, those those are kind of the two happier ones on the album. And those seem to be focused on Travis Kelsey. And then Clara Bow references um, a performer, like, way back in the day named Clara Bow. And so each verse talks about a different artist. So the first one's about Clara Bow. And then the second verse is about Stevie Nicks. And then the final verse is about... Taylor Swift. Well, it's not like a full verse about the Taylor Swift, but it's like comparing. It's almost as if like when a young artist is out in they're kind of trying to make their way. They're like, oh, you're kind of like this artist, but different and better in this way based on like what you've changed or like what you can learn from them. And so that's kind of how that song is. Um, structured where it's like saying you're kind of like them but also this and then the black dog so now we're jumping into the anthology so the black dog one of the four kind of tracks that were originally picked out of the anthology to be shared that one actually blew up a pub in London called the black dog and she's like I'm watching your location and you didn't turn it off and you're walking into some bar called the black dog. And she's like, well, I hope it sucks there. I don't understand why you're like leaving me. Um, great song. I really like the music in that one. I have spent less time in this back half of the album just because it's 31 songs and two hours and two minutes to get through everything. So I won't comment on everything. I will say, I think on this back half, a lot more of the songs are produced with Aaron Dessner of the national. And so a lot of people who really liked folklore and evermore and a lot of the songs that he was on there have really been drawn to a lot of these songs. Um, so high school is like very sweet and boppy it's got some lyrics in it that are very I'll, I'll just read it it's you know how to ball i know aristotle brand new full throttle touch me while your bros play grand theft auto 
It's true, swear, scout's honor. You knew what you wanted, and boy, you got her. Brand new, full throttle. You already know, babe. So, it's... It's very fun when she's singing it, but you're also like, what? What are these words you're saying here? And then Robin is really good. I think that one's going to go underrated a lot. And that one, that one I know is with um, Aaron Dustner of The National. I believe his son is named Robin. And so the song Robin is almost like, telling a story and talking to a younger person and giving them like life advice and commenting in that way. I mean, like, you know, you don't know what's happening, but like, I hope good things for you and better things for you. And then the bolter, which I thought, I thought this was my thought on the bolter before I heard anything was that it was going to be like, Oh, this, this man is a bolter in our relationship, you know, like bolted away. But actually it's like Taylor singing it. And they said they nicknamed her the bolter. So the female character in this case is the bolter. So maybe this is Taylor kind of commenting on that. And then a lot of people also were wondering. So there's a song called Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. There's also a song called Cassandra and a song called Peter. And people are like, who are all these people? Um, but one of the ones that everyone was like, oh, my gosh, like we were expecting a breakup album about Joe. And instead we got like a breakup album about Maddie Healy, which was like a very short lived thing, you know, that we saw publicly to our knowledge. And then also there's this one song called Thank You, Amy, where all the letters are lowercase except for K, I, and M. So like Kim as in Kim Kardashian. And the whole song is just like F, U, Amy. And so that one was um, Pretty much Taylor Swift being like, haha, Kim Kardashian, I'm still not over that whole drama and F you. So. There you have it. Okay. Oh, it's, also, uh, awesome. The Prophecy is like gut wrenching, but it's a great song. Like, if you really listen to the words. She's, like, begging that the prophecy could be changed. She's like, I just don't want this to be the way it is. Somebody change the prophecy. And I think the line that hit the hardest for me on that one was, a greater woman has faith, but even statues crumble if they're made to wait. So, I thought that was... But that one's kind of like the bargaining stage. And the way this album was kind of split up and referenced were like the five stages of heartbreak was how Taylor coined it. But really, you know, like the five stages of grief. And prior to the album coming out, she made playlists on Apple Music that were each of the different stages and pulled out lyrics from different songs. Like, for example, the... I love you, it's ruining my life from Fortnite. And there were others as well. And so, like, she had put Lover, like the song Lover, off of the Lover album in the the denial stage, which was like, oh, my gosh. You know, all these people were like, this is like a love song, but now Taylor's classifying it as in denial in the heartbreak stage where, you're happy with what you have, but actually, you know, it's leading to the end. So that one threw a lot of people. And then once the album came out, she added the songs from the Tortured Poets Department to those respective playlists on where she sees them fitting in. And that's all she wrote. That's all I've got.
Well, I could say more, but yeah. <laughs> I think it just adds to the delusion. You could say we could have a whole uh, separate podcast just for this, but, uh, like a whole uh, spinoff where Elizabeth just talks about Taylor Swift each week. I don't think um, I could talk that much about Taylor Swift each mm-hmm. week. You'd find you'd find a way. You just went like thirty five minutes easily. No, <laughs> nothing really yeah. holding you back there. So, plus, at, you've already gone through a lot of that. Wasn't just talking about the album or the songs. You were going through everything in her life over the last year and a half. Year. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't. There's, cover, there's enough. I didn't cover everything. Like the introduction of Travis Kelsey was the. Um, he went to her show. Like she played at the Chiefs Stadium, so he went to that one, and then he went on his podcast with his brother, or like, I don't know if it's his brother's podcast or their podcast together, but he's on the podcast and basically says that he went to Taylor Swift's show. And he was sad because he made her a friendship bracelet, but he didn't get to give it to her because she goes on vocal rest before and after the show because of all of the singing that she's doing, you know, playing a three and a half hour long show every night, three nights a weekend. And so because of that, he was like on the podcast and then jokes with his brother and he's like, yeah, I made her a friendship bracelet because all the Swifties make and trade friendship bracelets. But he said he specifically made one for her with his number on it. And his brother goes, your phone number or 87, like your football Jersey number. And then Travis was like, you know, which one, ha ha. And then Jason was like, ha ha ha. So apparently Taylor thought that was, like, super metal of him to just, like, call her out like that and be like, I wanted to give you my number and I couldn't. And so then they got connected and started talking. And then the, like, quote, debut of their relationship, which they were already in a relationship at that point, she went to one of his football games. And that was, like, the start of people knowing about their relationship. And then I think she went to 13 total of his football games. The 13th being the Super Bowl. And that was a whole thing where everybody was worried about whether or not she was going to be able to make it to the Super Bowl because he, or the Super Bowl was, you know, Sunday night and she was playing shows in Japan that weekend. So she had to leave Japan and the time zone was in her favor in that case. And she made it and went to the Super Bowl. And then once that season ended and she was playing her shows in Asia, I think he went to one of mm, I'm trying to think if he went to one of the shows. He went, I think he went to the shows in Australia, and then he also went to, I think, one of the ones in Brazil. And when she was in Brazil, she changed, I think I talked about this, that she changed the line from Karma is the guy on the screen to Karma is the guy on the Chiefs coming straight home to me. And then... He was also in Paris for night three. I think she had four nights, four shows in Paris. I think he was there for night three. And apparently she was like all like lovey dovey, like kept looking over to like where he was sitting. So there you have it. She's happy and we love that for her. Well, even when uh, I say you don't talk about something, you still bring it up. Um, even when what? Even when I said you didn't have anything else to talk about, you still... I still had more to say. I was like, ah! Oh, I... What can hey, I there's plenty more to say. As the young kids say, 
I'm a yapper. I like to yap. Is that, is that what the young kids say? That's what the kids are saying right now. Which kids are you hanging out with that say that? I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess we'll end the show there. Uh, unless you have any, do you, do you have any non Taylor Swift things you, have, you wanted to talk about? Um, I feel like my hair was the big one. Big the hair was, was big. I feel like, you know, nice visit to Greenville, but not mad that I don't live there anymore. Yeah, you keep going back every time. You know, you're saying you're, you're leaving there, and every time I talk to you, you're like, ah, oh, I gotta go back to Greenville. Well, I have one more work-related training, but that's in Atlanta, so. You'll find a way to get to Greenville, though. I'm sure I will. My team is there, so I have to go back and, you know, potentially visit the shop or something at some point. So, we'll see.